Hello everyone, I'm Maverick with Allen Knights Media, and today we're going to talk about importing 2D modular characters from an art program into a game engine. Specifically today we'll be using Inkscape, a vector-based art program, and Godot, a free open source game engine. These principles really apply to any kind of 2D game making process, assuming that you want a modular character. So let's talk about that part. First, like, comment, subscribe, helps the channel a lot. But yeah, why would you want a modular character? So modular characters in game engines are often made up of, of a series of nodes. So let's hop into Godot real quick. Here's our little character, and we have all these little nodes. I've named them, so the back of the hair, the front of the hair, the body, and the weapon. Oftentimes, these will get painted onto the screen in the order in which they're listed. In Godot, the the bottommost node will paint basically last, so you it will be on top of everything else, right? So if I grab this weapon and I move it, we're going to see it visually on top of all of the other nodes, the body, the hair, everything. So what this allows us to do is have pieces like the back of the hair, maybe we want that to do things separately from the rest of the character. In this case, I've set up a subtle uh, animation that I actually, I do have an animation, but I'm using a shader to make the bottom of the hair on the back of the character wave left and right. And you saw, you might have seen that the weapon went up and down. That's a regular animation. The hair moving is a shader effect that I've applied to it. Now, I don't want the body to wave like that. That would just look weird. So having a modular character allows us to set up complex movements and animations without having to redraw the entirety of the character and everything that they're wearing or any modular piece you want to animate. Inkscape is a 2D vector art based program. You can use a raster based program like Photoshop or GIMP. However, I chose vector based because I don't have a tablet readily available right now and you know, vector works okay for cartoony like characters that I want to be able to scale and not worry about pixelation issues. Either or, pick your poison. So let's talk about the process of how we made a modular character. So as you make the character, you want to be cognizant of what are the pieces you're going to want in your game engine. In this case, I want the back of the hair, the front of the hair, the head and the body. However, it's possible that maybe you want to do stuff with the feet, right? You, maybe you want to change gear so that if the character has a different boot, right, you can change out that boot and or take it off, right? And you can have that exported and layered just like we're doing here in this art program layering. And doing that process in your art program is kind of the same general way you'd think about it in your game program. So I don't want the boot to appear behind the leg, right? That wouldn't make any sense. It needs to be on top of. And so following those kind of logical consequences is going to make your art a little bit more organized for when you go to export whatever you need into your game engines. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a very, very simplistic addition to this modular setup. We're going to export it together, pull it into Godot, and put it onto the character model that we have over there, just to kind of go from start to finish of the, of the flow. Let's, let's jump in. So I'm going to add a cowlick to this character. So I'm going to select the pen tool. You can do this whatever way you want. You know, you can use your tablet, you can use pieces of paper that you scan in, whatever you want. I'm using this program, so I may as well hop right in. And I'm going to have the cowlick start here and just kind of do your standard anime thing where it goes up like so. And there we go. Now I will make it look a little bit prettier, which again, I'm working with a mouse. So there's kind of some wiggle room here in terms of how advanced we're going to get. But let's get it just close enough to be usable. 
There's all sorts of tricks that you can use in these programs. This is not a tutorial on how to use Inkscape, but one of my favorite fast things to do is just remove nodes until I get a simple, clean curve. Now, that being said, sometimes you might want that node, and so there are many ways to, to do whatever you need to do here. Let's flatten this a little bit. All right, so it doesn't need to be perfect. I might even invert this, uh, but there we go. We've, we've got a cowlick. Now, you'll have noticed that I have a tapered line over here. Many art pro most art programs that you're going to probably use have various ways to adjust the lines. Uh, everything from actually adjusting the lines and how they end and all that kind of stuff and the colors to special effects that you can apply. In this case, if I apply a tapering stroke here, okay, that's a general direction I want to go. It's a little bit thicker than I want, so maybe we set that down to half of that value. And, all right, so that doesn't look too bad. Fairly tapered. I'm actually going to invert this and use the opposite side here. Whoops, grab the wrong thing. Again, this is not a tutorial on how to make art, but I did want to show the general process. So let's put this right about there. Maybe rotate it just a bit more. Something like this. Oh, the artistic process. It's very easy to get carried away. All right, there we go. We've got a cowlick effect going. Let me just check my nodes here. Taper that out a bit further back. There we go. Okay, let me not get too carried away here. All right. We have a cowlick. Wonderful. Uh, she doesn't have one here, but I guarantee you she has one on some days. So there's our little cowlick, and we're going to treat this as if it's its own object. Maybe I should have kept that a little bit thicker of a line, but that's okay. So let's go to export this. Now, the trick to this when you're taking out your art is to make everything get exported from the same base image the same size so that when you import it it's all in the correct locations there's trains of thoughts about this but this is how i'm going to do it for today so let's find what i just made where are you did i accidentally put it in one of these things i sure did all right, so this is kind of what I was talking about, where you want to make sure that your process is going to be similar to what your game engine is doing. So I'm going to group this and name it. I'm going to call Cowlick, and I'm going to move it to somewhere that makes more sense. Let's actually treat it as its own unique thing, just for this tutorial. And I want it to be the topmost layer. And I want it to appear on top of everything. Uh, I, interestingly enough, Inkscape seems to draw in the opposite direction of the Godot node, so just something to keep in mind. Let's make everything else. Aha, bald person. Hey, hey, hey. Anyway, I'm just going to export what I want seen. So we go over to export. Super important, make sure that the opacity of the background is fully transparent. In this case, for Inkscape, you just set the alpha to zero. And then you export just that little piece. And then we're going to hop into the game engine after I get that little cowlick and I pull it into the game engine folder where I keep my hair assets. So now we have that cowlick hair asset image inside of Godot. So what I'm going to do is, many of these other nodes already exist and they're animations, but we're gonna keep it very simple. I'm gonna add 
a sprite 2D, which is basically just an image. And I'm going to provide the texture or the image for that as that little cowlick. So there it is. Now, the size here is a bit off, probably because of my negligence on how I exported it, but that's okay. Since this is a standalone piece, we're going to position it modularly exactly where we want it. You know, and if we had different cowlicks on different characters, we could swap them out, just like if we had different weapons or pieces of gear or that kind of thing. So there's the little cowlick on the character. Now, that's pretty much it. So if I were to save this and look at that character anywhere else I import the character, right? Let's just say we want to introduce a new character onto the scene. It's already there. And if the character moves, we can see that the cowlick stays in the exact spot we put it with that character. Now, let's say they enter a windy area and the calculate gets blown away, I can go into the code and make it so that I toggle the visibility or I do a little animation with that, with that cowlick, right? And I would have it display in front of everything except the weapon, because the weapon floats on its own. And I could set up an animation where the cowlick kind of floats away and I'm not gonna walk through that process because this is more focused on just the modularity and the flow to go from art program into game engine and why you might want to. And so this little thing could fly away, snap back to where it was, and then we would just toggle the visibility off. And then that would be that. So in that moment, the piece still exists. You're able to animate it separate from the character and keep playing the game as normal. And so that's one of many, many different use cases for using a modular approach to 2D game characters in any game engine you want. And I think that wraps it up. Now, we do have a scenario where we're not seeing this here. So I got, I, I'm going to take just an extra second to explain why. It's because I set the visibility to invisible. So we would want that back, and you would do this programmatically, right? Or set up the animation to exactly how you want it, but I'm working very quickly here just to kind of get the idea across. So if you were to play your scene, we can see that the spear toggled up and down, the hair in the back is moving separate from the body, and we now have that imported asset of the cowlick. And that's a general flow of what we wanted to talk about today. So. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Any comments, likes, subscriptions to the channel help a ton. Again, I'm Maverick with Owl Knights Media. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.